want to know the most confusing thing I hear almost daily from most diabetics is what is normal blood sugar levels? So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is going over why the confusion is going on with blood sugar levels. What should your blood sugar level be? And why is all the confusion, right? Because there's so many people, um, even in a webinar, when I have two, 300 people there, I ask the question, well, what is normal healthy blood sugar? Uh, some people say it's 60 to 120. Other people say it's 70 to 110. And uh, their numbers are all over the place. So I'm going to uh, go over the confusion and, and also kind of give you some more insight on looking at blood sugar levels and also some really good advice on knowing how to uh, actually judge and see how your blood sugar levels are doing. Okay. Um, when we look at blood sugar levels, um, let's talk about why there's a confusion. Okay. So let me share my screen with you and, and you're going to understand more about this in a second. All right. So what I did was I went to uh, the LabCorp page. LabCorp is one of the, the largest labs in, in the country. Uh, we use them all the time um, and I've been using them for, for thousands and thousands of patients. So what I did was I went and I looked at uh, what glucose could possibly be, right? Like where, where should glu glucose ranges be? And if you scroll down here, um, and I'm going to go down to this area here where it says fasting blood glucose, it says normal fasting is 70 to 99, okay? It says prediabetes is 100 to 125, and then diabetes is over 126, and that's also with an A1C. And if you're new to this, A1C is a long-term range for blood sugar levels. Um, so, okay, so here we go. So here, here, here's the information we're looking at, right? So this lab course says 70 to 99. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hop over to a different lab. This is called Quest Diagnostics. And Quest says it is 65 to 99. Wait a second, what is going on, right? So we're looking at fasting numbers and that means that you haven't eaten food about eight hours prior to doing the lab uh, when you do your blood work. Okay, so what is the confusion? Why is one lab saying one thing and another lab saying something completely different, right? It, it, it sounds like these labs, they're, they're sophisticated. They have doctors that obviously work with them and there are scientists that work in these labs. What, what's the discrepancy? Well, first off, let's look really closely at this page. If you look here, it says service areas must be determined. Well, what the heck does that mean? Well, it's kind of interesting. Um, when we look at labs, like LabCorp has regional areas, uh, Northeast, Southeast, right? When my practice was in New Jersey, they used the Northeast uh, region. And when it was in Florida, and now it's in Florida, uh, there's a different um, uh, lab core that works there. Well, believe it or not, uh, blood testing changes from area to area. And the range that you see right here, that's 65 to 99, or we go back over here from 70 to 99, doesn't mean it's healthy. It doesn't mean that that is where someone should actually be. Now, I practice something called functional medicine. And in functional medicine, we want to look at the proper function of where someone's body is actually uh, should be functioning. So let me give an analogy. Let's say uh, we look at a car tire. Well, there is the right amount of uh, inflation you need for a car tire, right? Whatever that is, whatever uh, um, uh, PSI that is, that's the way we would measure that. Now, a car tire should be exactly there for it to ride optimally. Now, it could be deflated a little bit, and it could also be completely flat. So in functional medicine, my job is to look and figure out how we get a person back to functioning, getting the inflation back to this tire and this analogy, okay? So, so this is why there's a discrepancy. So let's talk about what actually you should be at, okay? So when we look at fasting glucose, it should be between 85 and 99. That is where it should be. Now, let me give you another example to understanding how important blood sugar levels are. So where a human being's blood sugar should be is kind of what is comfortable in, um, in going into the shower, right? So if you go to a shower, the water temperature about 85 to 99 is it's probably where most people wind up taking a shower. Now, a hot tub is usually around 104. So you could imagine like if someone's blood sugar levels are going in the 120s or 150s or 200s, it would be like jumping into a shower uh, with the um, with the temperature being so high. You would like burn your skin. It would not be what you want to do. 
Um, so you really want to work on keeping your, especially fasting blood sugar between 85 and 99. Now, obviously, after you eat food, your blood sugar level may go up. Okay. So now let's talk about the next little tip and trick that I do recommend that I think could help you or anybody else who has blood sugar issues. So I'm going to give you a quick scenario. Um, from the time I'm filming this uh, video, a few weeks earlier was my birthday. And my wife knows that I love uh, carrot cake, right? That's one of my favorite things I like eating. So she got me a really awesome carrot cake. Now, it was a gluten-free carrot cake. And if you're familiar with gluten, it, gluten raises blood sugar levels in most people. So I had a gluten-free carrot cake. Um, it definitely had sugar in it. It had icing, things like that. Um, and, and it was done the most healthy way we could make that happen. We went to a very special bakery that only cooks kind of like healthier foods. Um, and, and, and I got something called a continuous glucose monitor. And what these are is basically, these are these monitors that you, you put on your arm, right? And what it does, is it tracks your blood sugar and usually increments every 15 or 20 minutes. And it's really cool. You grab your phone, you download an app. Um, right now, mine's on my arm, but you put it to the arm and it tells you kind of how things are looking, right? So you can see here, uh, on this little chart here on the website. Now, when you watch this, they may change their website, right? Because they may update it, but it kind of gives you where your ranges are, okay? So it's really good because it can kind of see how your body reacts and how your blood sugar fluctuates. So anyway, um, long story short, so I eat the, this this cake, right? And, and so forth. And my blood sugar level goes up about 25 points. Now, because I'm not a diabetic and my blood sugar levels and, and things are functioning, it came right back down pretty quickly. So... That is the birthday cake. Now let's talk about what happened about a day later. My wife decides to get really good, uh, high quality chips. They're called siete chips. Um, they're, they're really high quality, but they're made of cassava flour. Now, most people uh, eat cassava flour and everything's fine. So I had a few of the chips. It completely annihilated. <laughs> it made my blood sugar level jack up way high, almost over a hundred points from cassava chips. Now, I know what you're probably wondering, right? If I was to go do a survey and I was to ask uh, two different groups of people, well, which is gonna raise blood sugar levels more, the cassava chips or a birthday cake? Well, I think nine out of 10 people or 90 out of 100 people are gonna say the birthday cake, not for me. And why I'm bringing this up is I found these to be very useful. Um, they're not the most accurate, um, and I always recommend, you know, uh, double checking with the glucometer, right, that you may be using. Um, but they are really helpful so you can see how your body reacts to certain foods. So not everybody reacts to cassava chips. Not everybody reacts to, to carrot cake. My point is the best way to know is to, to actually check. So these are not necessarily cheap. Um, they could be up to about $200 uh, per month to use this. And the way it works, you throw it on your arm. You kind of see a picture here. It's a little white device, but you put this little cover over it in case you hop into the water or you go into a shower. Um, and it lasts for about two weeks. And, and then um, in a one month supply, you usually get two of them and you just replace them. Um, they don't hurt. They're, they're, they don't get infections. It's, it's a really cool device. Um, but they're, they're like I said, they're not cheap. Now, it's kind of weird how it works. If you're on insulin, sometimes your insurance will cover it. But if you're not, it's they don't cover it, right? So um, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like they 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 reward you if you're sicker. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. But anyway, so what I did was I, I teamed up with these guys and I said, all right, listen, is there anything you could do for people who who you know work with me or follow me or they 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 get courses from me or they're a patient of mine? Um, and, and is there anything we could do to help them? So what they did was they gave me a special code to use, um, and it's a discount code for twenty five dollars. Now, here's the way I would suggest using this. Um, if this is not something you're going to be doing long term, then I recommend trying it for one month, right? Getting the discount code. And that discount code is right here on the bottom. Okay, so it's uh, DRJ, so Dr. J, Spages 25. Okay, so you're going to apply that code and there's a link below um, that you're going to click. And you click that link, you put this little code in when you're checking out and you'll get that code uh, and you'll get the discount. So anyway... As I was saying, if you're going to use it for about a month, I think it makes a lot of sense to really um, look and test certain foods, right? Check to see if you react to apples or mangoes or whatever. And this gives you an idea of what could be making your blood sugar levels go up. 
Um, now, if you're going to use it long term, great, because now it's a lot easier for you to just measure how things are going. My point is, it's a really good way to educate yourself specifically to you on what could be affecting your blood sugar. If you asked me prior to eating a birthday cake or cassava chips, which one was going to make my blood sugar levels going up? I'm going to tell you, not from using science, just my own thought. I would be like, yeah, definitely the birthday cake. I would be wrong. So anyway, uh, this is something to definitely take advantage of. So let's go back and recourse. And we look at this first. Labs are not giving you the normal values. They give you a very wide range, and it varies from area to area. That's number one. Um, and they vary from lab to lab. Lab core is different than Quest and Bioreference. They all have different numbers. Um, as a doctor uh, and, and, and the special training I have, I know what number they need to be to be healthy, optimally healthy. And the second thing is get a continuous glucose monitor. In my opinion, I think it will save you a lot of aggravation on knowing what foods make you go up, what makes it go down. It gives you some clarity of how to kind of design your diet, right? It gives you some really good uh, control on that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please like and share. Um, if you're watching this on one of my training, uh, click on that link uh, that you see in the description and uh, try it out and let me know how you do. All right. So anyway, have a good rest of your day and I wish you nothing but the best and be well, stay well. All right. Take care.